In this video, we're going to compare and contrast the CCIE versus the MBA and its impact on your technology career, on your career as a network architect or a network engineer, or on your career as moving up as a technology executive. And this is a topic I'm very passionate about. I was one of the first Cisco certified internet experts. You can see my number here is 7417 and it was a long time ago. And I also hold an MBA and I've seen the impact of both on my career and the impact of uh, on others' careers. Now I've spent about 20 years coaching others to build technology careers and I've seen the impact of various things, leadership training, business acumen training, and of course the CCIE. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the CCIE and the MBA. To help you better understand the CCIE and all the mysticism around it, I'm gonna start about what it was in the beginning of the CCIE and why our reputation is what it actually is. We'll talk about what changed We'll talk about where we are today, and then we can really discuss the impact of the CCIE versus the MBA on your career and on your long-term career goals and on your salaries. And in the end, it's all gonna be dependent upon your career goals, but I want you to see the impact of the CCIE versus the MBA on your career and your salary, so you know what to know what's right for you. And I'll tell you what was right for me, but we can also talk about what's right for you. So. In the early days of the CCIE, and this is pretty important because I think this is where all of us got CCIE obsessed. In the early days when I learned networking, there was nobody that knew networking. I mean, nobody. And all of a sudden, the whole world realized there was this worldwide web thing, and if they put their business on it, somehow it was going to be good for them. And this was around 1996 to 1999. In 1999, that's when I took my full foray into networking and I said, this is going to be my career. And by the and very soon after, I was CCI certified. So I went in it in the gold rush of the CCIE. Around the time I finished my CCIE, because there was such a shortage of networking people and because the technology just never worked in those days, you needed the best people and it was very hard to find them. And at least if Cisco verified them with a CCIE, this was important. And in those days, a CCIE would easily earn $100 an hour and they could easily get 60 hours a week, which is about $300,000 a year. And this is about 25 years ago. And that's when the money meant a lot more. So out of nowhere, everybody was a CCIE or at least a small number of us were, and the earnings were incredible. And in those days, the best thing you could do for your career was to become a CCIE because that $300,000 then is about $500,000 a year now. Then something changed. When the technology got a little better and we got off of a lot more of these more complicated networks, ISDN and Frame Relay and these ATM networks and packet over silent networks and all these things that were fairly complicated and started moving into more easy to use technologies like Ethernet. And the technology itself started to have more power and capabilities. All of a sudden, the network got a lot easier to manage. And then we started having hosted network and data centers called clouds for cloud computing. And then you saw networking in big cloud providers and organizations were reducing their networking staff to a point. And it looked for a period of time like people thought networking was going to go away. But of course, that couldn't occur because you have no cloud computing without networking and you have no internet without networking. So there was always a need for people. And there's still a shortage of qualified networking people but it's not like it was then. And it's nowhere close to like what it was then. So now we're in an environment where CCIEs are still in demand. And networking and good strong networking is still in demand, but it's not what it once was. And now businesses are not only expecting their technology to work, but they actually wanna get a positive impact from their business. And 70 to 80% of technology projects fail to provide any value to the business, meaning the business spends money on it, but gets nothing back in return. So now companies want more out of their technology investments, and wouldn't you? So now they're starting to look for people that actually understand how to take the business and enhance the business. 
And now they're looking to find people that can tie the business and the technology piece together. Now, this is where it starts to get complicated. And this is where we're at now in the world. So is the CCI or the MBA better for you? Well, it all depends on your goals. Let's talk about one career path. Let's say you are a great network engineer or you're a great network architect and your goal is to become, say, a distinguished architect or a distinguished engineer. If you're already in one of those roles and you just want to move up, a lot of that in that kind of role as a distinguished engineer is related to your technical expertise. And it's related to the number of discussions you're actually doing in the industry. You know, are you participating in, say, an IETF working group? And are you coming up with things that you're known for with your name on it? Or maybe an RFC. And are you the thought leader? And are you writing? So at that point, when you start reaching these distinguished engineer places, it's now a combination between technical acumen and your ability to communicate it, your ability to present it to others, and your ability to drive the industry in a certain direction. Now, that's where it starts to get tricky. And a lot of those skills, that business acumen, those leadership skills, those management skills, those communication and branding skills at the distinguished engineer level, actually are more aligned with the MBA than the CCIE. But... For a role like a distinguished network engineer at a Cisco, you probably need to also have the CCIE. So in a role like that, you could get it without with the CCIE and uh, not the MBA, but all the business acumen that comes with the MBA, the leadership skills, the sales skills, the presentations, the executive presence, the CXO relevancy. You could do it without that way, or you could have a CCI and an MBA. Now let's take it the opposite direction. You're a network architect and now you want to move into management. Now the CCIE, which is a great networking uh, certification, it's, it's about our fundamentals and our competency. And uh, once we've through that CCIE, that's typically when we start learning because now people put us on these big projects and now we get to see, wow, look all, all we don't know when we get to learn. And that to me was the best part after the CCIE was learning that. But if the CCIE is more based on technical skills, and your goal is to move into management, it's actually taking you in the wrong direction. Because for management, or to move into director and senior director positions, now what you're talking about is you need something much more. And that's your ability to present and exercise influence and communicate and lead and do so many other things. So that's more inclined to the skills of the MBA. Now, when it comes to salary, well, Here's where things kind of get interesting. I wish it wasn't the case, but technical skills, typically speaking, are not as well rewarded as business skills. And uh, as we start looking at that, this is where it gets, uh, it favors the MBA. So it's still feasible and reasonable to get a good $300,000 network architect uh, job or even a network engineering job for $300,000 a year in say a bank in New York City. That's pretty feasible today as a CCA with a lot of skills outside of the CCA. But how does that compare to the MBA leadership type role? Well, if you look at an average senior director at Cisco, their pay is $527,000 or so per year. And that's numbers straight from Glassdoor. If you look at an IT director at uh, Pella, I'm sorry, let's say NVIDIA, the average salary is $555,000 a year. If you look at a senior director at Palo Alto Networks, you're seeing an average salary of $540,000 a year, again, all from uh, Glassdoor. So when it comes to salary, there's a huge impact difference between the MBA and what you would get out of a technical certification like a CCIE versus a CCDE. So what it comes down to a lot of is where do you want to go? I will tell you for me personally, when I did my CCIA and I finished it and it was, I think it was May 17th, 2001, looking at it. And when I went through that and it opened so many doors, I got my first network architect job. It was on, uh, it was uh, one of the, the world's largest market maker on the NASDAQ and I was their lead architect. And to me, it was so exciting. And then I got to learn all the things that I learned. I will tell you, I'd moved into a principal architect role. 
you know, solutions architect role and then another one. And at some point, my career just hit a point where I just couldn't go anymore. And when I wanted to move into bigger roles, thankfully, I had the guidance of a manager that said, Mike, now at your point, it's more about your business acumen. It's more about your leadership. It's more about your executive presence. It's more about your emotional intelligence. You got to pull it back a little bit from the technology to get to your goals. Now that person recommended some leadership training and some executive presence training and presentation training and sales training. And I took all of it. And then I did the MBA as well. And that's when I started moving into the bigger roles. Now, what can I tell you after training architects now for uh, forever and having trained architects that work for AWS and Azure and Google and Cisco and IBM and Accenture, Deloitte, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, and many other leading organizations, I can tell you from experience, they tend to hire people that are technically competent, but the people that have business acumen, leadership, sales skills tend to go very, very far. Now, all these kinds of organizations that I mentioned also have that technical path where you can get some of these great technology professionals that are also paid very well. So really what's in it for you is what do you want? What's going to make you happy? I will tell you, if you could combine the CCIE for the technical competency with the MBA, I think you've got a recipe for success. I know many CCIEs like me with MBAs that have taken on big roles. So if I had to say choose one, I don't know. But if you ask me what I would suggest, if you can do both, I think it's really fantastic. So I hope that gives you a perspective on the CCI versus the MBA. If it's that answer of it depends like every other answer and network architecture technology answer, where do you really want to go? If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. If your goal is to become a cloud architect or a network architect or an AI architect or a security architect or an enterprise architect, join us for a free webinar. We have free webinars on all the architecture careers almost every week, and we have free documents in the description of this video to help you build your career. I hope to see you in a free webinar soon. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Take care and have a wonderful day.